Bora TV. The world is thinking. I have two new things to show you. There are a couple of quick updates for those of you who were here last time or saw the talk. Um, and I have I've been so excited to show them to you. Some of you may have met, remembered I showed this example of a student project called Embrace. You guys remember? Where they were given the challenge to design a less expensive incubator. And when they went for uh, children born in developing countries like Nepal, and when they went to Nepal, there were incubators, but there were no babies in them. And they asked, where are the babies? And all the babies they discovered were born in the country and never made it to the hospital. So it doesn't matter how cheap you make the incubator. What they needed was a way to keep babies warm. And this is what they ended up with. Since then, as you know, they've launched that company, Embrace. But since the last two years, they have completed some of their, what is it, the clinical trials? And this is their latest infant warmer. Because they're constantly acting and prototyping out in the world and putting these back in the hands of mothers, they've learned things like the mothers were disturbed with a disembodied head, so they had to add a window. Not because it needed to be there functionally, but if they didn't have it, it wouldn't work as part of their lives. There are many things that they keep learning. What excites me is they've saved already, even though they're just beginning hundreds of babies' lives, it impacted thousands of people, and in the next three years, they are positioned, oh, here's what, one of the new babies in it. In the next three years, they're positioned to save 100,000 lives and prevent illness in something like 800,000 lives of kids who would have survived but with long-lasting health effects. And if you add that up in a local region that has the potential to contribute something like an increase of a billion dollars, GDP is their best estimate. I'm so excited that our students get to experience their impact in the world so early. One more update. You may remember another project I talked about um, called Delight. Now this is a, we sent t 10 teams, one of our classes, Extreme Affordability, sent 10 student teams to Myanmar to help farmers who make a dollar a day in their areas of water or agriculture. And nine of them worked on water, but one came back and said, these families have a lighting issue. They're spending a third of their income on kerosene. So they started a company called Delight, which is more around like a solar lantern. This is their latest one. I think you can now buy it on Amazon. It's now selling in 42 different countries. And since they started, they've impacted over 2 million people. And for these students, their lives were fundamentally redirected. They were heading down an expected path. They were in school, and then they were going to go get a job. And it was in a planned career. And by stepping into this new identity, now they find themselves unexpectedly starting companies and living in India and Hong Kong and providing, saving the lives of infants and providing light for people who don't have it. We call this being derailed, and it happened to both Doug and Melissa as well. Or maybe it's more like their lives were re-railed on the path that was best for them, and they were on a path that didn't quite feel right, and they didn't know why. And this also came with a dramatic increase in change in the impact that they were having on the world. I don't think any of them imagined that so few years out of school that they would be impacting millions of lives. It gives them meaning to their work. For me, this cascading impact, the magnitude of something we never expected, has radically reshaped my philosophy of leadership. We weren't focused on incubators or on lights. We didn't have an agenda to save the lives of premature babies, yet lives are being saved. We didn't have an agenda to provide light for people who are in the dark, yet entire villages are being lit up. We were focused on nurturing the creative potential of our students with the hope that they'd feel confident to, with their ability to innovate in their lives. And it's this disconnect between this impact and the magnitude of it and our focus, the innovators, that has not only forced me to rethink how I lead, but what, it, what education means and how we might tackle some of the most significant challenges of our time.